Let's go ahead and play with a little something here. I'm going to show you kind of a fun little text effect. It's called 3D Rotating Text in Camtasia. Let's just build this real quick and I'll kind of show you what happens. So I'm going to go to the annotations. I'm just going to add a text box. And we're going to make this a nice big chunky font, something like Arial Black. And we'll make it nice and big as for demonstration purposes. And I think for this I'm also going to change my background color. Let's change it to like a, a blue just because it will show up a little bit better. Let's zoom in on the timeline. So here I got me a text box. And to start off with I'm also going to delete the drop shadow for now. Okay just a plain old text box. Okay, so now I got myself a text box and in fact, you know what, I think I'm going to take this a little higher. Which you can do, by the way, you don't have to stick to the max of the slider here. You can actually go up to 500 point font. Let's take this to like, I don't know, 400. See what that looks like. That might demo better. Okay, so I got myself a text box. Let's scooch this up a little. I'm going to put the playhead at the very beginning, snap it to the beginning, like that. And, you know, this is only three seconds. I'm going to change the duration to like five. I'm just kind of setting this up. I'm, I'm creating a piece of text the way I want it to look, ultimately. Right? So I'm kind of setting all this stuff up. And so I. Picked my big chunky font, made it nice and big, and I gave myself a little bit of room here with the callout duration. Snap the playhead to the beginning, and then I'm going to right click and copy, and right click and paste. Another copy. Okay, and since it's on the clipboard, I'm going to do that a few more times using the hotkey Control V to paste. Paste, paste. What do we got? One, two, three, four. Let's do it. Five, six, seven. Now let's try, let's just do it six times. Okay. So now I have basically six copies of this text box, right? All stacked up on top of each other. And since they're right on top of each other, it looks like it's all just one thing. So on the first one, Let's go to the callout properties, not the text properties, but the callout properties, the visual properties. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave all of these settings alone. On the second one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to position. Okay? And position, of course, tells us where on the canvas this object resides. So, zero on the x-axis and zero on the y-axis is basically dead center, okay? Everyone's probably pretty familiar with, you know, x and y, horizontal and vertical positioning. But, in Camtasia, we can actually also take advantage of the third axis called the z-axis, which is also referred to as z-space. z-space moves things forward and backward in 3D space. Not just the 2D space of left and right and up and down, but we can also go forward and backward. So we can pull something forward, which is what we're going to do here. So on the z-axis, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to put a value, kind of a small value, of like 3. Okay? And then, let's move to the next one down. And again, on the z-axis, I'm going to pull it three more, and I think it's pixels, three more pixels forward. So I'm going to add three more to the three that I have on this second element. So this will be six. Okay, and you'll kind of catch the drift here as we go. So that one's six. Let's go to the next one. Change that to nine. Go to the next one. We'll change that 
and make sure you're changing the position here, not rotation yet. 9, 12, and then on our bottom one, let's change this to 15. So if we think about what I just did there was, we started off flat in 2D space, 0, 0, 0. Then on this one, we pulled it forward or towards us, 3. And then we took the next copy and pulled it three more from the very back. Okay, so that's just kind of how they stack up. So let's try this. <laughs> In fact, what I'm going to do is on the bottom one, let's do this. I'm going to kind of move it over here. I'm going to go ahead and add me a drop shadow. So I'll right click on it. And I had to move it because if they're all stacked up like this, you can't hardly select it on here without getting it by itself. So let's try add a, a drop shadow to the bottom one. And we'll play with a couple of other ways that might work. Okay, so now it has a little bit of shadow depth to it. Let's highlight them all. Let's right click and group. All right, now let's play with the rotation a little bit. And what I'm going to do is just kind of screw around here a little. Uh, let's spin it around on the y-axis. So I'm just going to click in here, and you can use the little wheelie thing. But what you can kind of see is that it now has some thickness to it. And let's spin this around a little bit too. So now it has like a, a 3D effect to it. And uh, let's straighten it out just a little bit. So you can use the little wheelie thingy here. I like to click inside the box and then use the up and down arrow key. If you do that, you'll notice that it, it's much more controlled, but it's still a little you know, slow. If you want to move it fast, hold your shift key and then use the up arrow key while you're inside the parameter box there. And you can get it moving pretty quick. So. Uh, I'm going to try one other thing as an experiment here. We added a drop shadow to the bottom one. I'm also going to add, in fact, to, to do this easier, let's go to Visual Effects and add the drop shadow this way by dropping it right in the group. Okay, so that probably will show the, the 3D-ness of it a little bit better. So let's click on the group again and go to the rotation and play with that a little bit more. Just kind of spin it around. Okay, so it, it has a nice 3D effect, but let's go ahead and put it to 100%. Okay, see that? And I could have made it thicker and chunkier, pulled it out, extruded it more in 3D if I just add more of these layers, right? So the more layers and the more, you know, I bring it each one three more forward, this can get really thick if you want. But, you know, you'd have a lot of layers, <laughs> which isn't that big a deal, but it is kind of interesting. And it's going to look pretty darn nice. Let's go back to fit, and I'll collapse the group. And let's see, let's reset so I know that it's 3D, but one of the things I might want to do is animate that, right? So let's just move our playhead in a little ways. And I think what I'll do is I will just uh, drop a keyframe. Press Control A, drop a keyframe, and then we'll change some parameters to add an animation. And uh, I don't know, let's just spin this guy, make him twirl around once to kind of demo the so we'll just spin him minus 360 degrees there we go and I'll preview that nice let's slow that down so it demos a little better on the webinar Cool. A nice thick 
chunky 3D text effect for you. And of course we can also animate it any other direction, X, Y, Z, make it do some crazy spin and stuff if you want, but that's just a little demo. Uh, let's see, so I have a drop shadow on that one and a drop shadow on this. Uh, let's try something to make it even a little more dramatic, shall we? Uh, let's say on the bottom layer, let's go change the text color from white to, say, red. And maybe we'll do that on the top layer as well. So on the top and bottom layer, if I change the color and now scrub through it, and again, I'd probably want this to be a little chunkier, a few more layers in there. But now, you know, it even has a more pronounced 3D effect. Whoosh. Nice. So you can play with all kinds of stuff like that. Okay, so that's a fun little trick.